Hey everybody, a little bit of housekeeping before we start the episode. Right now, over on patreon.com slash spoilers intended podcast, we have another Patreon picks poll going on. That's where anyone at the $1 tier and above can vote for a movie that we will review that patrons will get early access to before it hits the main feed. This month's theme is 80s movies that scarred children. So the choices are Labyrinth, Legend, The Dark Crystal, and The Neverending Story. So again, anybody at the $1 tier and above can vote on that. Also right now, if you haven't seen it in the feed, we are doing Mandalorian quick reactions. So after every episode of The Mandalorian this season, we're going to do like a 15-minute quick, just raw, unfiltered thoughts on what we thought of the episode. Those are coming out the morning after the episode airs. So if you're watching The Mandalorian, you can listen along with us. And now, without further ado, enjoy our review of Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the single worst movie I have ever watched. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you have only seen one movie. The then. Room? <laughs> the, the only room? reason I watched this movie is because it's high rating and it is supposed to be a classic. This movie is so bad. But, I mean, you could have watched it just for Harrison Ford alone. Yeah. I've or, heard so or... much about this movie. I expected it to be fantastic. People said things like, sets a new bar. We'll keep you on the edge of your seat. And even the best film ever made. I mean, I was genuinely disappointed by watching this film. I don't know about oh that God. last bit, but like, you know, sets a new bar. Yeah, for 1981, sure. Right, when did they watch this last week? Yeah. I don't know. That was one star review from IMDb. Why, hello there, and welcome to Spoilers Intended a podcast about series and films. I am your host, Andrew, joined as always by Ryan. Oh, I didn't see you walk in there. Hey. <laughs> and Steven. If you were a snake, you would have bit me. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> this, <laughs> this week we are discussing what is considered one of the best action adventure stories ever put to film, Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Star from 1981. Not by that one-star reviewer. Debatable. No, apparently not. Debatable. The worst, single worst movie I've ever watched. <laughs> the dude just doesn't watch movies. I... I yeah, see, we need to have an understanding of what he's seen before this. <laughs> yeah, to like put it, to, to, yeah, to put right? it in perspective. Maybe he only watches The Room. I don't know. Actually, no. No, that would be worse. That would be yeah. worse. It is. Yeah. It is by default worse. I'm trying to think of like... Or like, what is it? The, the Dragon Ball Z evolution oh, or Dragon whatever. Ball, <laughs> Dragon Ball evolution. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're talking about Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first in the Indiana Jones series. Mm -hmm. Trilogy. Tri no, Trilogy. Well, no, there's going to be a... Nah, nah. There's going to be five. It's a trilogy. Five. It's By a trilogy. The time we are done reviewing all of these films. <laughs> Trying to gonna... will it to have. <laughs> it's just a trilogy. I don't know what y'all are talking about. We are going to have to watch Crystal Skull. Oh, oh no. no. But that's not what we're talking about today. No, it's not. No, thankfully. Uh, however, before we kind of go on about that and likely gush about a good portion of the film, I would imagine. Yeah. We'll see. Um, oh, my gosh. Let's talk gush, about... Gush, gush, gush. <laughs> God, it's stop. Disgusting. Uh, let's talk about John Williams. Mm. But not just any John Williams. Bum, I want, bum, 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 bum. I want the, to hear John Williams. <laughs> what you guys' opinions are, and I guess mine. Um, <laughs> you can get in here too. What his top three soundtracks are. Whole package. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. So if you come, you know, the first one you say doesn't have to be number one. Sure. But... Uh, just kind of what you think his most iconic and influential soundtracks are that you genuinely love and will listen to at any mo moment in time. Yeah. You hear the, you hear just, the fanfare it's, it's mixed, come on. It's you, mixed you, into your playlist. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'll go first. Yeah, do it. Get in there. Uh, my three would probably be Empire Strikes Back. Uh-huh. Yeah. Common theme here. Jaws. Okay. Yeah. Eh. And Superman. Yeah. Okay. That's a classic. Those I mean, are my like, but, three that I would probably, again... A lot of his stuff is great. I would probably put Jurassic Park up close, but the top three for me would be, yeah, Empire Strikes Back, Jaws, and then, yeah, Superman. I mean, yeah. if nothing else, Superman has stood the test of time and is very iconic, right? You get the ba 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 Oh, dude, the Krypton theme or the planet Krypton? Or like, death, death of 
Krypton, uh -huh. I think, is one of my favorite tracks from yeah. that album. So good. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like his, his opening, like main theme fanfare is great. It, it still gives me chills when I hear it because I was a huge Superman fan as a kid, like mm -hmm. a, a young kid. Mm -hmm. And I would watch those movies. I had Superman pajamas with a Velcro on cape. <laughs> oh, I had those too. Oh, yeah. I had the little you know, booties <laughs> on them. And I would put them on and make my parents play this movie for me. And like when that music, I would like get so hyped up. I would like be sitting there just ready to go. Well, yeah, it he, also the the soundtrack really lets him just dig into the brass. Oh yeah, yeah. in some he really likes his his big brassy, but for some stuff yeah. it wouldn't really be appropriate. Yeah. Whereas for this is just go all out, you know, blare the trumpets, yeah. let the fanfare go. Well, and and it really fits just Superman in general. Yeah, and, and yeah. like the, I think that really defined him as just a comic book character and just like in pop culture is that because I I I honestly think that good movies are only good because their music is really good. Well, it's a it's a very necessary part. It's a very, very, very yeah. Yeah. thrilling drama, and if there's just nothing backing it in music, it's just going to be a lot of dead space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and that's not to say that, like, there are certain films that are much more emotional that don't have, like, major overarching scores. Right. I, I would argue you might have a hard time finding one. The, yeah, that don't have stuff that, like – fits the film perfectly. perfectly. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, and especially with the Superman soundtrack, like the planet Krypton, when they're, you know, first go into that track and you see Krypton for the first time. Yeah. Like, that track alone encapsulates such a heroic feeling. Yeah. Like, it is the feeling of, like, like you, I can listen to it and you can hear, like, I'm a person that has incredible power and I have to do the right thing. Yep. You know, like, the, the fate of the world is in my hands. I have to set an example. <laughs> I'm Superman, you know, like, yeah, there's so many things he does with that, that soundtrack that, yeah, just matches the tone of, of especially what Superman was back then in the you know, late seventies. Yeah. Just heroic, you know, mm -hmm. the, I just want more scores nowadays to bring back the brass. Yeah. Well, so we I need more brass. I'm actually surprised. <laughs> I mean, like, now don't get me wrong. I think the Jaws soundtrack is phenomenal. Yeah. But I'm actually surprised you picked that in your top three. I know Jaws is one of your favorite films, it period. Is. Yeah. And because I feel like. The Jaws soundtrack does so much with so little. It does. Like, man, he can make two bum, notes bum. sound, like, so more ominous than other composers <laughs> have to use, like, an entire, you know, yeah. arpeggiated sequence across multiple <laughs> chord progressions. No, 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 dude. Bum, bum, bum. bum. You know, <laughs> gotcha, right there. So uh, there's a lot of tracks on Jaws outside of that one, though, that I think are really good. Like, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of emotional tracks. There's a lot of, like... Um, just the suspense, and th there's a lot of tracks that go from, like, happy to suspenseful to sad across the, the course of one track that, yeah. like, I just love the way that he he weaves all those emotions into one song. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think Williams does a really good job at that. And I think, for me, Jaws, there's a lot of tracks on there that do that. Same yeah. with uh, Superman. There's a lot of songs that kind of, like the uh, the death of Pa Kent song. Yeah. It starts off happy because mm -hmm. he's, like, playing football or whatever with his dad, and then it goes to, like, concerned, and then... <laughs> like upset and then the, like sad with like the funeral all in like one yeah. song is like just so over the arc of that like three minutes or whatever yeah all right so Anyways. steven because uh, I, I have something to say about that specific not that specific song but yeah. that kind of arc but yeah i'll get it to when i get to me and i'm sure we'll get to empire again yeah yeah we'll get to empire in a minute <laughs> in fact we're gonna get to empire right now there because it is empire strikes back yeah right? go figure yeah. it's really hard to not have a star wars in this list well it and it feels like the the best simplest choice for me well, and Empire Strikes Back, I think, is his most complete mm -hmm. album, I think, mm -hmm. because you you have a lot of emotion to it. Anyways, yeah. can, continue. Well, no, we'll, we'll get is, to it in a second. There, there yeah. are lots of opportunities there with, with emotional points, like even going into like you know, Han being frozen in carbonite. You have a lot going on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but also just some great sequences. And, of course, like the classic, you know, what you expect from Star Wars Yeah, music, the, the right? massive fanfare. Well, yeah, again, bring the, out the brass. The Han and Leia love theme. Yeah. Is, is it's only it, It's not in A New Hope, right? It's no. only in that no. one. Yeah. yeah, only in that right. one. Yeah. Fantastic well, track. Uh, so the... Th I mean, well, so continue. <laughs> yeah. So, there, I have so, a lot to say about Empire. So, okay. so I, am, I am not going to be a coward like Ryan, and Jurassic Park makes my list. It's not an honorable mention. <laughs> Doesn't matter, man. Every time like for me, Jurassic Park, it's like the main theme is, is killer, is, yeah. and everything else is pretty good. There's some other stuff yeah. in there. It that's does. Good. It doesn't matter. The main theme could be the only <laughs> thing in there. They could just play that on repeat for the whole <laughs> Got movie, and it'd be good it's enough. just like the same chord progression ba, ba, over it. Ba, ba, da, ba, it works. Ba, I don't know why. Ba, ba. <laughs> well, the the thing that I love about Spielberg's use of the tr of the sound of like the main theme mm -hmm. throughout the film is. Mm -hmm. 
he knows exactly when to use it. Yes. Yeah. To, to, to the absolute maximum effect. Well, yeah. you get the, it's always, you have the big reveal, right? Camera rises yep. into as the music rises and boom, yeah. there's a dinosaur, right? Yeah. It's that Nailed perfect it. marriage of, yeah, that, yeah. that, it's, yeah, especially Tracking whenever they, they see the, the brontosauruses for the first time. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Or, or like when they're flying on the choppers into the island. Yeah. And like as it pulls up. Yeah. It, I've, honestly, it's just that same shot over and over again. The camera rises. Spielberg's just like, yeah, you got it, man. Music rises, <laughs> camera rises. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your third? What's your third, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go Harry Potter. Oh, so okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he did a phenomenal job with right. that. Right. And I think that. Because, I mean, obviously, like, Hedwig's theme, right? You yeah. Do, 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 do. And what everyone's going to recognize as the iconic sound. Yeah. But what he laid down in, because he stopped doing work after, on it after, after Azkaban. Azkaban. Yeah. But what he laid down in that lasted throughout. And, yeah. you know, 30 years from now, when someone brings up Harry Potter, it's still going to be associated yeah, with that it. Is the, that is the theme mm-hmm. that you hear. Yeah. And it's it's such a great mix of whimsy and also melancholy but also wonder because there's amazing moments like you know like when you go into the great hall for the first time yes and the chorus is going and everything but there are also a lot of you know sad difficult moments even right from the start for what harry's life is like yeah so i think it covers a very wide range and then again the groundwork he laid carries through for all those movies and will for forever yeah go into like the harry potter land at universal studios and like when the music is playing and you're walking around, you're like, oh, this hit's so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah, it's, it's got the, the whimsy. Yeah. 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 It, 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 yeah. It's great. Yeah. All right, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, what's your three? <laughs> Get in here. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go with um, two obvious ones already. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, third one's obvious too, but um, Superman, yeah. which I, like I'm not even a big Superman fan. Like mm-hmm. the, the films are great. But the I was as a kid. I kind of grew out of Superman. Yeah, like, as a kid, love me some the Superman. the soundtrack for the original just kills. I mean, it's just yeah. it's so good. Uh, then Empire Strikes Back. Sure. Yep. Um, yep. It's it is so hard to get away one from just Star Wars because it's just very prevalent in just today's society pop culture. Yeah. But the I think my favorite part about the soundtrack is really it does have a beginning, middle, and end, mm-hmm. and it tells its own story and even within the tracks like so asteroid field is probably my all-time favorite john williams track Mm -hmm. um where you start with um kind of like the and like they're going through the asteroid field and then you have like the empire theme come in yeah and then you have like this final thing of like hey they're finally through and they're safe and it just has like this perfect progression yeah that it's really exciting and probably one of my favorite parts of any of the star wars films anyway it's a fantastic sequence but, uh, but then you have like Clash of the Sabers at the end with the duel mm-hmm. between Vader and mm-hmm. Luke. Very good. Uh, and they're escaping Bespin, which is, I mean, just the, it's, the film's great, but I think the soundtrack really sets it apart from a lot of the other Star Wars tracks. Well, it's almost impossible to imagine Star Wars without John Williams' music in it. Oh, uh, there's no way. There's no well, way. I, I, I definitely think that Star Wars is, you know, A New Hope was a good film on its own just for the time. Yeah. But if you did not have John Williams' soundtrack with it, I don't think it would have been as successful but as it I mean, was. Can yeah. you imagine having to read that scroll without the music behind yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, like as it comes up, like it's just it just it, what if it's just no sound, right? Just yeah, read this, nerds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and then I'll I'll go ahead you and just pick hear the, people in the theater coughing. Yeah, <laughs> um, and this is not because it's on topic for today, but I chose Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Um, uh, I chose, really good he chose it because it's on topic. No, I, 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 <laughs> I genuinely feel. love the Indiana Jones well, theme. I mean, so it's the yeah. first, it's the first in the uh, Indiana Jones universe. Yeah. Right. So all the themes that are going to carry through are established. The, yeah. Just stays here. right here. Yeah. yeah. But I, I love Marion's theme mm-hmm. and uh, obviously like the main fanfare for Indiana Jones is phenomenal. That, that fanfare. And it, it's again, it's like, imagine if you're a composer, right. Mm-hmm. And you're the dude that wrote the fanfare for Superman, the fanfare for Star Wars, the fanfare for Raiders. You're just like, I got it. What do you need? You need an <laughs> iconic song that's going to be associated with this brand for Harry decades. Potter, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park easy. let's, do it. let's yeah. go. Yeah, like, gosh. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, the, the Raiders soundtrack is just really good because it, it's, I think it's definitely one of, one of his better ones because mm-hmm. you have a lot of really good um, light motifs that kind of show up in different different parts of the tra- soundtrack, but then yeah. you also have like the really iconic kind of pieces that just stick with you the whole time. Well, especially yeah. you consider how many, I don't want to say genres, but in terms of like 
childhood influences, right? We're, Ryan's over here talking about being in his Velcro PJs. Yeah, yeah. So you have Superman, so you have huge influence there. Then you have stuff like Star Wars, huge influence there. Indiana Jones, huge influence there. Uh, you know, Jurassic Park, huge influence there. Then you go to Harry Potter, huge influence there. <laughs> This is just generations, How many times can you say it? generations of kids Six, apparently. <laughs> who have been massively influenced. And if yeah. you're, you know, I don't know, some kind of weird psychopath kid and Jaws was your childhood. I'm looking I at loved Ryan. it. I'm staring at Ryan when <laughs> I say <laughs> this. <laughs> then, <laughs> you know, that's just that's decades and decades and decades yeah. of generations of kids growing up with this music yeah. as their favorite piece, right? Well, I remember not vividly, but like somewhat like the age that I figured out that the same guy that did the music for mm. all these movies did was the, the same music. guy. It was probably around Jurassic Park release yeah. time is realizing, hold on. So you're telling me the same guy did the music and this and this and this. And this like know? some of the most uh, popular and most um, prolific franchises yeah. that have existed. Period. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is just Good on him, man. Like he's I still yeah. nuts. He he killed he still comes out with bangers. Like honestly, the the Force Awakens soundtrack for Star Wars was really, it's really good. good. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, I will throw an honorable mention for Hook. Yeah. I mean it's got the, a great soundtrack. It, it, I think the the fur like the first main theme for it is really, really good. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of themes in there that kind of lose it a little bit. A bit, yeah, but there is some good emotion in there for it to back behind, not yeah. just, you know, Peter rediscovering how to fly yeah. or, you know, the children and his interactions there. Like there's there's some other good elements they can work with in there. But the main theme is also killer. So. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I love the uh, the whole sequence with him, um, like, kind of running away from the Lost Boys um, in their, um, uh, like, in their hideout or on the, whatever. On the island or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a fun one. Like, when he's first there. He's yeah. Like, I'm not a I'm not a pirate. What are you? A lawyer. Kill the lawyer. I'm not that kind of lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, let's talk about Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let's do it. Which, I, I guess that's the full name. I, I remember just call when it, I it's was, always going to be Raiders. It's just yeah. going to be Raiders from now on. Yeah, right? when I, I remember when I was younger, it was just Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well, because technically Indiana Jones is one of the Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? Technically, yes. I mean, he, yes. yes. So it's kind of redundant kind of to say Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so quick synopsis. This is from 1981, directed by Steven Spielberg and um, partly written by George Lucas, so kind of like the dream team here. Mm-hmm. And I have trivia about that in just a minute. No. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, in 1936, archaeologist and adventurer Indiana Jones is hired by the U.S. government to find the Ark of the Covenant before the Nazis can obtain its awesome powers. That's it. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, solid. Uh, uh, we've already talked about, um, you know, music done by John Williams. Yeah. Uh, cinema- I thought this is the point where you're like, music done by Danny Elfman. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. uh, cinematography done by Douglas Slocum and uh, starring Harrison Ford, Karen Allen mm-hmm. as Marion, Paul Freeman, uh, Ronald Lacey, uh, John Rice davies and Gimli's Reese. back. Re- is it John oh, Reese? John Reese. John, John Reese davies yeah. yeah. I always, I always mispronounce that. Uh, and then Alfred Molina as ca- his first I know. credited role in a film. As uh, Cepito. It was crazy because I... A Cepito. See, I watched that movie so much growing up. Yeah. And then... I, did, I didn't see it for a while. I didn't realize it was him. Then I remember watching Spider-Man 1 and 2, or 2 yeah. specifically, seeing Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, you know, getting exposed <laughs> to him again in the early 2000s. Yep. Then going back and watching Raiders and be like, oh, there he is. The, the Leo pointing meme. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's uh, Alfred Molina. Who, who is he in the... Uh, he's the guy... He's, he's the guy at the front. Yeah, the he's the guide... Throw at me the, the beginning idol. of the film. Throw me the idol. I'll oh, toss you the whip. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so. Yeah. He's in, he's in <laughs> oh wow. Of, he's in a little bit of brown face, so you may not have. I mean, he's, a little, yeah, he's, a little, yeah. he's a little rough looking, a little dirty. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, interesting fact, whenever they were pitching this film, Spielberg and George Lucas, you know, at this point, like you have Star Wars, right? And yeah. you have Jaws. Two of like the, the, mo- like the biggest directors in Hollywood at the time. Mm-hmm. No one would take them. They didn't want to make the film at all. Which is ridiculous. Which is insane. And was then it they, because it was a throwback to the pulp stuff of the I don't 30s, think so. I think that the... just no one wanted to do it. Uh, then they finally convinced Paramount to do it. Right. And um, obviously it worked out for them because, you know, they've had a, at least three really successful films. Well, two really successful films, two mildly, one mildly successful, one Probably not successful Probably all four all. financially successful, yeah. though. So, oh, I, <laughs> I do remember Crystal yeah. Skull did make quite a bit of money. Yeah. yeah, it just um, didn't get the best reception. Yeah. So this is 18 million budget. That's nothing. I tell you what, when, when you get back into the 80s, when you start talking about budgets, it's just, oh Adjusted my gosh. for inflation, what are we looking at there, I wonder? I'll look it up. Uh, yeah, so 
What year was it? 80, 81. 81. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so you have some really fun, um, you know, this is like kind of a, definitely a throwback to like kind of the pulp adventures, obviously. And um, you get to punch some Nazis in the face, which is always uh, entertaining to watch. And you get Harrison Ford, uh, which he was actually the second choice for this because it's it was... It's still not that much. It's it's 59 million. Yeah, I was really not that much. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, at the time, they wanted Tom Selleck to be yeah. Indiana Jones, but then he couldn't get away from Magnum P.I., yeah. so they're like, I guess we'll go with Harrison Ford. Oh, the worst. Right. Well, you think about it, too. Like, Harrison Ford, I think, had partially gotten typecast in Star Wars. It did. Bit. Well, that that's one reason why they didn't want to use him, right. because George Lucas didn't want to be known as, like, Martin Scorsese using Robert De Niro in every single one of his films. Right. Right, yeah. But, yeah, you think about it, too. Like, Harrison Ford, man, he did... He was Han Solo, Decker from Blade Runner, and Indiana Jones within like a three years. Like, yeah. Boom, yeah. boom, <laughs> like, boom. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this film. I mean, this is obviously a film that we've all grown up with. Yeah. You know, pretty much our entire lives. I, I remember this was one of the first. And it's funny because this is a PG movie. Technically, mm-hmm. it's probably really a PG-13 movie at this point. I think it's uh, been reclassified to PG thirteen yeah. after uh, quite possibly because Temple of the Doom, Temple of Doom, which we will review at some point, yeah, um, was the reason why PG thirteen exists. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's true. Oh, really? Oh. I, I actually think it's um, uh, bu- 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 Wolverines. Oh, there is another, or it's one of those. I think, but yeah. e- either way, I, I don't think it's. I don't it think it it's was around two, that same but time, but it's yeah. one of the first to be rated PG thirteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. But yeah, so I mean, I'm curious what you, what you guys think about this. Raiders still carries its PG classification. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Um, I love this movie. I've obviously seen it hundreds of times probably yeah. at this point. I don't even know how many. Uh, oh. I watched it as a kid on repeat, yeah. basically. We had the VHS, and I literally wore it out. Like, it would not <laughs> play anymore. The tape itself degraded to the point of, like, yeah. disintegration. Um, yeah, I, I think... In terms of a pure adventure story, it's hard to to beat a lot of the stuff that happens in this movie. In, in terms of, like, the framework of how to do a good adventure movie. You yeah. know what I mean? You have Harrison Ford, who is gruff but charming. At, at, at his prime. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, is peak Harrison Ford. Yeah, like, Marion's character is so interesting. Like, especially the way she's introduced, you know, like, she's out drinking this lady and this, she owns this bar in the middle of Nepal or wherever so it is. So, her, her entire backstory mm-hmm. was Karen Allen's, um, like, that was her thing. That was not written in. I thought you were going to say Karen Allen's actual backstory. Uh, she <laughs> yeah, wanted, I was supposed to be like, what? <laughs> uh, her initial backstory was, she just said it was uninteresting. Mm. So she basically made up all the stuff about like them being in love when she was 15, you know, like being oh, yeah. dragged, like that was kind of the thing that she brought to the table with it. And Spielberg loved it, obviously. So. Yeah. No, and I love, there's, there's so many good action scenes, like the, the, um, the convoy chase, you know, towards oh, the end. Oh, that's one of my favorites. That's fantastic. So there, there's a lot of stuff on display in this movie that's like Spielberg really like flexing his Spielbergness. But like, I don't think he had had a single movie before this that had like a convoy chase in that same way. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, so this was mm-hmm. definitely him stretching out with like, it's weird because like, I think back on it as like, this is like, Oh yeah, Spielberg just doing that Spielberg stuff. But at the time, this must have been like he's he's creating the mold here. Yeah, he's yeah. creating the mold, and it's like you know for sure some of the special effects don't hold up perfectly. I think yeah. they were good for the time. For, yeah, for 1981, pretty good. Yeah, it's a long yeah. time ago at this point. And a, a lot of stuff still does look pretty pretty interesting and wild. Um, yeah, o- overall, I still like it. Like every time I watch it, this is one of those movies I could I could put on whenever. Yeah, you just, just like on. you're just like oh yeah, let's throw on Raiders. The music I'm, is so good. Like mm-hmm. this this is a, a a very again like it's the template for like a just fun adventure movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Steven, Steven? What do you think? Uh, so I'm not as rose colored glasses about this movie as mm-hmm. the two of you. Uh, I definitely think within you the, haven't even heard my thoughts yet. I know what your thoughts are. Don't you start. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to hear it to know what's going to happen over in that corner. <laughs> Uh, of the three, the three that matter, uh-huh. mm-hmm. you know, number one for me will always be uh, Crusade. Crusade, yeah. And then there's a pretty significant gap, and then Raiders, and then a pretty significant gap, and then Temple of Doom, right? Interesting, so, okay. Uh, that yeah, is I'm very not, interesting. I'm not actually. saying this is a bad movie by mm-hmm. any means, especially since, again, like we're saying, this is establishing the mold. Yeah. Not just of, you know, kind of Spielberg himself. And Indiana Jones. But Indiana Jones as a character, 
Harrison Ford as a typecast actor. Yeah. Uh, like, he's just firmly in this role of kind of the scoundrel, the rogue. The gruff. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is also kind of fun because you have the, uh, the juxtaposition of his character as, you know, the rough and tumble, you know, pull out the whip. But then he's also a professor in yeah. some scenes, you know, teaching a class of, you know, starstruck ladies <laughs> yeah. uh, in his class. But he's teaching this class. He would have torn up, uh, was it Hot or Not or whatever? No, Rate My Professor. Rate My Professor. <laughs> yeah, I was like, torn, Hot or Not? Not Hot or Not. Yeah. He would have torn that up uh, yeah. in the, the internet era of college, let me tell you. Right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, he's, he's, the, he's the dashing rogue. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, there's, there's so much about this movie that is ultimately iconic. I mean, I don't know for either of y'all, but I remember as a kid when we went to Disney World, they did like the Disney stunt spectacular they still had that when i was there last a, a while ago were they still doing yeah. the, the mm-hmm. indiana jones yeah oh, wow. wow okay i wasn't, yeah. See, oh, I wasn't yeah. sure yeah. if it was still there or not it's it's still super fun yeah and like you can feel the heat coming off the explosion oh yeah yeah that's real fire yeah it, it is real <laughs> fire it can, it can burn you. <laughs> but like you still see you know the set pieces done yeah live there because it's just such an iconic scene yeah same mm-hmm. thing for kind of the opening of the movie right you know the stealing the the idol and then the big boulder like these are these are iconic, you know, genre-defining moments for yeah. an action-adventure movie. Any kind of, you know, there are people out there who are, you know, playing D&D and they're role-playing these kinds of scenarios right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they will be for decades because it's such an iconic thing. It is. Uh, I love Marion's character and kind of what she brings to it as a damsel in distress, but also not a damsel in distress. She, she's got some spark to her, she got, but she definitely has, she fills more of the role of damsel in distress. Well, a lot of her lines basically revolve around going, Indy, Indy. Yeah, which she it, can get a little gets, grating. It gets grating after a little while. <laughs> she gets herself into so many troubles. It's like, he's dealing with something. Help yourself. What are you doing? I mean, she's got the frying pan. Yeah. Yeah, she got the, she got the frying pan. Dong. She's drinking uh, the, the other archaeologists under the table. Yeah. She, you know. She's trying. Yeah. But I, I think uh, as a character, she's she's pretty good. Yeah, right? helps a lot. Uh, John John Reese Davies' character as well, who you know makes a return for Crusade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sala is um, a, a lot of the heart of the film. I think. Yeah, he's he's kind of the the big lovable bear yeah. character. Mm-hmm. Uh, there there are some elements that don't hold up great. You know, I wouldn't call it the special effects per se, but you can tell that for some of the stunts, you know, they had to kind of you know pull punches because they could actually yeah. kill someone here. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a couple of sets where you can tell that, like, that's not concrete, that's foam. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, also, or, like, the action is very slow mm-hmm. because it's just kind of like, well, we're, we have all these moving parts and either we're not as confident about it or we're not as well, you know, trained or versed in how to do this or we can't slap CGI in here to put the propellers in there. Well, because right. CGI, you know, didn't, didn't exist. exist. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so, fun thing is uh, this was um, a very big juxtaposition for Harrison Ford going from, like, uh, Blade Runner and um, and Star Wars over to this, mm-hmm. where he's he actually did a lot of his own stunts for this, and um, he he broke ribs. He had he dislocated oh, wow. his knee um, because the Jeez. the plane ran over it. Oh, oh my gosh! Um, like there, the, he it suffered a whole lot of. Um, and but, then never did his stunts ever again. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm done the, with this. <laughs> yeah, he 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 suffered a lot for this for this initial film. No wonder and, he's so grumpy. <laughs> um, he, <laughs> he got to pay. like so. Every, whenever <laughs> they were bit filming, by a snake. <laughs> uh, he didn't get bit by a snake. Uh, but when they were filming in Tunisia, mm-hmm. uh, which is the same place where they sh- uh, shot Tatooine for Star Wars and um, something else for uh, Steven Spielberg, but yeah, um, whenever they were filming this in Tunisia, basically the entire crew got sick like, multiple times with, like, cholera and, well, like, there, other... There's at least one iconic scene where he is actually suffering from, like, dysentery. Yeah. And he didn't... They, like, they had this whole yeah. fight scene choreographed out. He's like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, the, the giant dude with the big sword. Yeah, the, yeah. the sword, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, and he just he just pops him with the gun because he was like, just shoot him. Yeah, why like, would I, why why would why I would, fight yeah, him? Yeah, why would I yeah. fight him? And, uh, but, yeah, he was actually suffering real-life um, sickness at that point, yeah. like, during those scenes and stuff. So, like, there's a whole lot of stuff, which we'll get into in Spoiler Wall yeah. uh, for, for more specific things. Yeah, but, you know, like I said, I think you can feel kind of the, the slowness or almost the repetitive, repetitiveness of stunts sometimes where they're like, well, we can definitely do this. Yeah. So let's do it twice instead mm-hmm. of doing this and something else. You know, Tom Cruise isn't running around in here holding onto the side of a plane or, you know, we're not doing that kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, so you can feel it a little bit in that. And then also, 
it has definitely has the feel of like an 80s action adventure where you have moments where it's like, well, would this really happen here? Or like, how does he get out of this? It's like, yeah, it just, it just happens. You well, know, kind of hand wave a little bit. And, yeah, I mean, like, you know, there's an ancient tomb that they enter that has a bunch of very healthy snakes in it. I'm not, see, I'm not really concerned about that one too much. <laughs> just just other, other stuff. We'll get spoiler wall, we'll get into it. But yeah. there are some bits there that don't hold up quite as well. But I feel like what you're seeing in some levels is the birth of the modern blockbuster in a lot of you ways. You are. Yeah, it is. Like, absolutely. Again, yeah. this is this is well, the prototype. This yeah. is the mold. Well, well, technically, Jaws was the first modern blockbuster. But it wasn't a action movie. It was yeah, it, wasn't, it, 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 it didn't yeah. really have an adventure. Sp- specifically it was more talking of a drama. about stunts. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah, the, even Star Wars. It didn't have a lot of that. It was all yeah. special effects. And then they moved on to here, which is more rough and tumble. Yeah, and yeah. Star, you know, Star Wars doesn't things. really have a ton of stunts. Not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, I love this film. I'm, I'm very similar to I'm, Ryan. I'm shocked. <laughs> shocked. <laughs> yeah, I'm very similar to Ryan when it comes to this film. This was one of the first films that uh, my parents ever showed me mm-hmm. when I was younger. <laughs> Just because it was it was relatively safe to watch. It's rated PG. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's well, pretty. It's pretty safe. It's, honestly, it's pretty safe. Uh, yeah. Outside of like the final scene, which See, is pretty graphic. I have an argument here, right? So this okay. is why, as a kid or because you saw this as a kid, it's why the music's so iconic because the first couple times you saw that scene, you only heard music because you you're, you're covering your eyes because of what was going on, right? Yeah, it's true. Uh, but yeah, so I, I love this scene. I, I definitely wore out probably two VHSs when I was <laughs> right. younger. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is definitely a film that we'll just throw on kind of whenever. And it's like, oh, I mean, we haven't seen an Indiana Jones film in a while. Let's pop yeah. it on. Uh, that with and Last Crusade just kind of flaps in between. Yeah, no, nobody just sits down and be like, you know what I feel like tonight? Temple of Doom. I, I used to I, as a kid. I, I used to. I yeah. like Temple of Doom. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad film. It's yeah. just when you have, it's when, intense. You're like, when you're like, I'm going to watch Indiana Jones. Nobody right. sits down and says, well, it's just a casual Friday it's night. It's usually not Temple your first choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Most of the time you land on Temple of Doom, it's like, well, we watched Raiders last time. Right. And we've also seen we've, Crusade we've seen a couple Crusade times. We've seen Crusade too many times. Yeah. yeah. Let's, yeah. let's throw yeah. on Temple of Doom and let's watch, um, uh, I can't remember her actual name. I can't name. either. Uh, just scream the entire the movie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like the, the worst. The, the script writing on that was just, they only needed two letters, A and H. Ah, ah, that's all you do. Oh uh, but yeah, I, I think this film's great. It's very much the prototype to a lot of action adventures that came out afterwards. Yeah. And uh, this was way more um, popular than what they thought it was going to be whenever they were making it. Even Spielberg mm-hmm. thought, what he was, was like, our, oh, I'm making a B movie did here. You, did you give us right. a box office? You gave us a budget. Um, I did not pull the I'll box office. I'll get it. I keep take. talking. Okay. I'll get it. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely set a lot of things for just pop culture. Like, we have an oh, entire... Yeah. Um, Disney show, um, the um, Scrooge McDuck, um, DuckTales. Duck Tales? Yeah. yeah, yeah, DuckTales. It took me a second, sorry. Do, do, uh, do, but yeah, do, so we do, have like do, an entire show do, basically do. based off of the archetype of being like, you a, treasure know, like a treasure hunter and right. action adventure kind of thing. And like that's just proliferates. I mean, you have National Treasure. We got Nicolas yeah. Cage running around. Tomb yeah. Raider and Uncharted. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. It, anything that's treasure hunting or archaeology related owes a lot to... Indiana Jones. Well, and and Indiana Jones owes a lot to Tintin. Yes, Yes. absolutely. But Tintin in America wasn't like a household name. You know what I mean? Uh, You speak for yourself, sir. I had never heard of Stephen it until Love's the CGI Tintin. movie came out. Oh, really? <laughs> the movie's, oh, man. The movie's I, great. The, yeah. the comics basically taught me how to read. <laughs> yeah. uh, so $18 million budget, yep. right? Do you yep. want to guess what our worldwide gross uh, is? I'm going to say uh, $500 million. I'll say $200 million. Okay. Three ninety. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right that's, in the middle. Yeah. That's a great return on investment. Yes. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Woo. I mean, like, because you know, up until this point, like these didn't exist. Like you had adventure films and stuff from like the sixties yeah. and fifties, but the, this the, was the just pulp, something different. The pulp fiction. Yeah. 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 Especially you know, a lot of everyone can get behind punching Nazis. Right. And and them being the bad guy makes it a lot of fun yeah. because like people are familiar with like their mantra of like how they do things right well, it also really helps the movies age well if it was like this is indiana jones and he's punching the natives it'd be like this is kind of <laughs> really hard about that. it's kind of hard to watch in 2023 <laughs> you're like punching yeah. the nuts like all right <laughs> okay so normally we always we you know, by at this point in the cast we talk about you know would you recommend it would you rewatch it we yeah. already we've already established that so i have a question for you okay uh, multiple sources and just 
articles and people have considered this to be one of the best films ever made. Okay. Um, just from action adventure and just everything that it brings to the table, music, action, story, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just kind of everything. What do you think about that? So I definitely could see how someone could make that argument and it would not upset me. Right? Yeah. Like someone saying that to me, like Raiders is one of the best films of all time would not make me go, oh, how dare you? I'd yeah. be like, okay, I can see that because again, it is the prototype for what would become so many movies mm -hmm. after it. Mm -hmm. And it did do so much right. Yeah. And it did introduce a lot of Spielberg's more uh, advanced filmmaking techniques and like shots and stuff yeah. and the way it was edited and that kind of stuff. There, there are things that were forward thinking for the time. Yeah, where now it's just, right. but you know, you, so, if you didn't I, I have do those believe films, you have you to grade it on a curve. You can't yeah. like look at Citizen Kane and be like, it's in black and white, a zero out of 10. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> objectively, Schindler's you, list. You, have to, you have to judge it based on the time it came out. So I, I think at the time, I could easily see this being probably one of the most exciting and, and fun times people have ever had at the movies, right? Yeah. Um, I think in a modern lens, there are definitely things that doesn't hold up. And there are things that like, you can tell they were like learning how to do some of the stunt work and learning how to do action. So some of it isn't as good, but some of it is surprisingly great. Yeah. So it kind of like goes back and forth for me. I don't think it's, man, I don't want to say it's not one of the best films ever made, but I definitely feel like it's not like the best. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's, it could so, easily be argued to be in the top list. But So I'm going to jump yeah. in here, right? Go so if you, if you took a list and you said, I don't know, like top 25, top 50 movies, yeah. right? If this was in that list somewhere, yeah. I don't think I'd be like, ugh, why is this here? Yeah. Right? And once you get into that kind of where we're talking, you know, top 100 best movies ever made or top 50 best movies ever made, mm -hmm. and we're splitting the hairs between number 10 and number 39 or whatever, it's like, how much difference is there and what are you waiting, right? Because right. here you're, you're really waiting, well, this is, you know, genre defining the prototype, the mold, so many things reference and yeah. riff on it and call back to it. And it's just, it's in just, you know, the culture, right? We just recognize. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, it's a shorthand at, at some point. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, the boulder's rolling down and the guy's running away from it. You put that, that happens in cartoons. It happens in other, it happens everywhere now and yep. you know where it's from. Yep. Yeah. So, it depends on how you want to weight things, right? Of how you want to shave those hairs of, is it number 10, number 40, number whatever. But I think if it lands on the list like that, there's not something to be upset about or something. It's like, oh, well, why would you, you know, it's not yeah. like you dropped the room in here. Or, yeah. You know, um, unless you're our, um, our reviewer from the beginning of the episode. <laughs> but there are always going to be haters. <laughs> there's a lot of filmmakers and I, I don't know anybody specifically, but I feel like there was a lot of people at the time when Spielberg was on the rise and was getting really popular mm -hmm. who looked at what he did as, cheapening the schlock. genre. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, the th same same argument you have for the MCU. I was about to say yeah, the same I, thing. I cut yeah. you off. For, it's, you're yeah. good, yeah. But <laughs> it's the same argument that a lot of, like, uh, Scorsese had about the MCU. Whether it's just like, well, it's not cinema. Right. People were probably saying this, you know, in the late 70s, early oh, 80s. Oh, 100%. When Spielberg yeah. was, you know, blowing up. But it's like, it's just a different style of filmmaking. It is. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's not the, like, the black and white, you know, French, right. you know, like, well, I mean, deep... Even, Compared emotional. to like 2001 A Space Odyssey with yeah. Kubrick's films. Or yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's a Spielberg movie. Yeah. But they're infinitely more rewatchable, I think, they are. because I mean, of that. You know? I, so like Space Odyssey is one of my all-time favorite sci-fi films, yeah. period. Like hands out. Easily. But that is not a film that I have – I've probably seen it maybe 15 times at right. most. Yeah. Like, and I don't just I've throw this, that on on a Friday yeah, no, night. But like it's, it, is, <laughs> it is an intense film. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you go into Indiana Jones, you know exactly what you're getting it, right from the start. Yeah. Well, it's also, it's so built into us at this point that you could turn it on and, you know, go get something out of the kitchen or yep. look at your phone, talk to your friends. You still know what's happening. I mean, I can recite almost every line of this film. <laughs> right. Like, I like I know all the inflections. And well, you just, say, like the, you just say Indy and you covered, like, 60% of the line, Andy, right? Andy, Andy, Andy. You got it. You can do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of agree here that like, I definitely think that, you know, if this showed up on like, you know, say top 10, top 20 kind of films of like just impact into mm -hmm. pop culture and, and cinematography and it, like, or cinema, like this is like, if it was on here, I'd be like, yeah, I think, I mean, that's definitely right because it just does so much right that, 
any kind of misgivings that it has just basically aging over time, like I'll say special effects or stunt work or yeah. whatever, like you can overlook that from this like, well, this is what set up the like all these later films to actually do that. Right. This was, yeah, like summer blockbusters learning how to walk. Yeah. 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 If you want to discover the deep, rich treasures in our back catalog of episodes, you can go to spoilersintendedpodcast.com. We've got all sorts of back episodes there. We cover everything. Do we have booby traps and stuff to stop the people from... Absolutely no. not. No. <laughs> Easiest not tomb you could ever raid right here. Okay. Are there spikes that come out of the screen whenever they try? No, no snakes. No, no snakes. spikes. <laughs> Why no have rolling to be boulders. But you do have to have a staff and you have to aim the sunlight at the very specific time. And apparently they didn't care about what time of year it was. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got I links have, to I have more about that. <laughs> we have links to everything. We got links to our Patreon. We got links to our Discord on there. That's right. If you want to jump in and idolize us on Discord. <laughs> hey, wow. Hey, yo. I, had to, I had to jump in and take that one. Yeah. Uh, jump on. We love to, to talk with you. We love to chat about all kinds of things. Not just the episodes, but other things we're watching, uh, whatever people are listening to, Andrew will throw mm-hmm. out some some uh, playlists here and there. Yeah, uh, we got a hobby corner. What people are working on. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, not everything's always going to be podcast related or episode related. We mm-hmm. we all everyone loves to watch other stuff too. So it, I I normally post what anime we're watching. Wait, you guys have been watching other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a personal problem. Just kidding. I watch all sorts. Of stuff. Uh, but yeah, we also have uh, social media. You know, if mm-hmm. you you know. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We don't have Twitter, but... We, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, that's it. Uh, but yeah, every week we try and post uh, kind of what's coming up the next week that we're going to be reviewing, so mm-hmm. you can either watch along with us or catch up if, you know, for whatever reason we're going to be reviewing a TV show or, uh, you know, it's a film that you haven't seen in a while or haven't thought about in a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, so we, we try and uh, keep up with that best we can. So follow us on Instagram and f- uh, Facebook. Yeah, do it. And we are back from the spoiler wall. If you have um, escaped the the dungeon, tomb, uh, pit, pit, tomb, pit, pit, tomb, tomb, tomb. tomb. yeah, tomb. There the we well go. of souls. The well of souls. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. If you have escaped and you are ready for some spoilers of a film that came out um, over forty years ago, then uh, before any of us were up. born. <laughs> Yes. yes. I can't say that about a lot of the things we were <laughs> uh, But yeah, so spoiler, all spoilers all the time. We're going to get mm-hmm. into all of our little categories here. But before we do that, I <laughs> our am. Cute little category. Our cute little categories. <laughs> uh, I am going to just give a couple little tri- tidbits of trivia here. Yeah. Bathe me in trivia. Andrew's trivia corner. Andrew's trivia corner. That doesn't corner. roll off That's the not That's thing. terrible. <laughs> yeah, just, don't, don't do that again. <laughs> uh, so the Well of Soul scene required over seven thousand snakes wow where do you oh even my, get that many ugh. um the only okay so which to get pet that store many, did they raid? They, they literally raided all of london oh wow they just went everywhere and just got as many snakes Man, and a I, lot of the um, reptiles in there are not actual snakes they are legless lizards so you can actually geez. see like if those look, poor legless lizards forced to coexist with all these freaking snakes <laughs> um and <laughs> they're, 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 snakes. they're also <laughs> they're snakes. um so after they got all the snakes in there, mm-hmm. uh, Spielberg looked at the scene and he said, there's not enough. <laughs> so they got a bunch of black hoses right? and they yeah. cut them and then they put them on there. So you can, if you actually look close and, closely, you can see it. Yeah. The, other, the other funny part was, so like obviously one of the plot points of whenever they're going into the Well of Souls is to use the flame to keep the snakes away so he can lower right. himself down, right? Yeah. Except – Snakes are cold blooded. They love the heat. Yeah, they don't. Care. Right. They don't really care that much about fire. So, so they like actually got closer to it to try and you know they stay warm, warm up. Yeah. which is hilarious. And Spielberg got so mad, like he actually like grabbed a snake and yelled at it. Why do you like fire? <laughs> You're supposed to hate fire. Now You're that, ruining my movie. That's a director right there. That's a director. Um, know your part. Uh, Didn't you read your line? <laughs> Uh, also, um, this is a little bit more unfortunate. There was one snake death during production. Death of a snake or death of a person? No, death of a snake. snake. Okay. No, there are actually multiple snake bites. Oh, well, sure. Okay. Um, you stop there. You're like, there are actually multiple paws. Like, death? <laughs> snake death? They killed people? Um, no. Okay. So there was a python that got um, killed from another cobra. Oh, man. Okay. Um, that was the only actual, like, animal death. Yeah. Uh, however, there were multiple snake bites throughout production by pythons biting crew members. Right, yeah. Uh, there was one part where uh, um, 
uh, one of the guys, one of the snake handlers, basically, it bit him and it wouldn't let go. Oh, so he was like, he talked to another guy and he was like, hey, I need you to whip his tail like it's a whip. So he will, the shockwave will hit his head and it'll open up his mouth. That sounds like mouth a bad open. idea. Yeah. I don't oh, know it, it worked, that... apparently. Okay. Um, but yeah, so um, also <laughs> one of the- Imagine that conversation. You're drinking coffee. Hey, Jerry. Um, I need a favor. I need you to do a favor. What's up? <laughs> oh my God. What's on your hand? <laughs> uh, so there was also another moment to where um, one of the scenes where- um, Marion's legs are like kind of like uh, like hitting Indy in the face when mm. she's like trying to hang off or whatever. That's not actually her legs or her stunt double's legs because the stunt double refused to do any scenes with the snakes. Right, can't blame um, her. It is a just a stunt man that shaved his legs nice. and, and wore a dress. Guy's got some nice calves, <laughs> man. <laughs> Short <laughs> shorts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was um, a a wild um, thing I mean, to that, achieve that whole pit filming sequence had to be just a total nightmare. Yes. Also, another fun conversation. The stunt master goes over to all these grizzled stuntmen. All right, guys, who's got the best set of legs? Uh, every, that's what, hike, that's hike over trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, show me your calves right now. Yep. Um, and to Bill achieve... Bill it's you. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is just kind of gross. Uh, to achieve the sound of thousands of snakes slithering, mm-hmm. Ben Burt stuck his fingers into cheese casserole. <laughs> this was augmented by applying wet what? sponges to the grip tape on a skateboard. Well, wow. What? <laughs> Listen... I need to make something slither. Well, let me just stick my finger in this cheese casserole. <laughs> sound people are wild. Some sound engineers like sitting there with his fingers in front of his face. I have the exact thing we need for this. <laughs> you ever, you know, when you, you got the ladle in there and you go to lift it, it makes it, what if you just put your finger in there? <laughs> um, the Instant only, snakes. <laughs> the only venomous snakes on set were cobras. Mm-hmm. Obviously the two that we see in the yeah, scenes. Yeah, that, that you got to do the hood. Yep. And um, whenever Han, uh, Han Solo. Wow. Harrison Woo! Ford. Wow. Hey, hey uh, come on. Whenever, whenever Harrison Ford. Indiana Jones. Drops his, down on the ground, right. um, and the the cobra like you know flares out at him. You yeah, can actually uh-huh. see when he lands the plexiglass Glass. that is separating him and the snake yeah. to make sure that it didn't actually bite Harrison Ford in the face. Sure. Yeah, that'd be a little bad. Yeah, um, but yeah. So th- those are just some fun snake facts. A lot well, of snake <laughs> facts right here. <laughs> this, is, this is a snake fact. <laughs> please, please no. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's move on to spectacle. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll start on this one. Go for it. I think that this was, um, one, a really pretty, like, beautifully shot film. Mm. There's some really awesome sequences that uh, that Spielberg, like, that really defined a lot of Spielberg's style, I think, moving There's on. There's a lot of the shots in Egypt that are just, like, yeah, yeah. pretty. Well, well, then you get the music behind it, too. That's yeah. a different, so you, different you score the, thing. But my, still, yeah. My two favorite shots of the film are... Whenever you have the silhouette of the sun setting when they're all digging mm-hmm. and yeah. um, Harrison Ford's putting on his hat, like yeah. he's taking off his um, uh, his cover and then he's putting on his actual hat and you get to see the full silhouette and you're like, oh, yeah, this he is great. passes the silhouette yeah. test. <laughs> uh, and then you have whenever he is in the map room and you have the sun coming in behind him and you can see it expanding and contracting with his breath as like the big, massive music is like yeah. going through mm-hmm. to like you know, hype up this, this moment. Yeah. And I, every time, like, those are always two moments in the film where I just, I look over if yeah. I'm not like, if I'm like doing something else, I'm like, Oh yeah, this is it right yeah. here. Yeah. This is the fire. Uh, the other thing too, I think my favorite sequence in the film is, uh, it's always a toss up between the fight on the plane or around the plane mm-hmm. yeah. or the actual care, um, the caravan, caravan. convoy. Convoy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the convoy chase scene took five weeks to film. I believe for only yeah. six minutes of footage. Well, and again, can't stress it enough. I know that they did a lot of stunts similar to that in like the Buster Keaton days and stuff. But yeah. Like, I don't think a lot of filmmakers in the early eighties were equipped to know how to shoot that efficiently, probably. Yeah. So there's probably a lot of retakes and a lot of like, okay, on paper, we wanted to do this, but when we got it in camera, you can see it, either it's yeah. it's unsafe or to make it safe the cars are just really slow right yeah. so uh so yeah the the scene where he is um basically using his whip to to kind of go under the car under the uh-huh. truck yeah uh, that is actually harrison ford he did his own stunts for this oh wow they really? had to dig out a trench to basically lower him a little so bit that he would actually fit. yeah well yeah. and the truck was modified to be higher mm-hmm. to where you could obviously fit a person under the and Easily. camera and yeah. stuff yeah that yeah. differential will come down and pay you a visit uh he he received m- multiple bruised ribs 
for this. Oof. And when asked about it, he was like, well, we wouldn't do it if it was if if it was too dangerous. I was like, well, I don't know about that. Uh, I don't You're know, under a moving, cr- moving yeah. truck. But fun fact about that is the truck actually wasn't moving that fast. Mm-hmm. It was, um, they shot it instead of 24 frames per second, they shot it at 20 frames per second to mm-hmm. speed up the footage slightly Just to, make a little it, bit. Yeah, to make it feel mm-hmm. a little bit more intense, which is you can kind of tell whenever he's moving his arms. Yeah. A little kinda, bit has- it, it, like kind of jittery a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, but my favorite part about that entire sequence is um, his fight with like the older German officer, which are funny, funny enough, all of his stunt doubles. Oh, really? And he ends up taking out all of his stunt doubles oh, during this entire sequence. That's, that's great. Um, but the the older German officer that, that like, finally, like... Like the sergeant or whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, just, like, the brutality of their fight in the cab. Yeah. Whenever he, like, comes in, he just keeps punching him where he got shot. And, like, oh, man, it's, just, it's so good. I, I also like that on that specific chase scene when uh he's in the cab and they both go underneath that one area and they hit all the like the the support structure yeah. on the wall and they both look at each other like we're glad we made it through that and then he just punches him <laughs> immediately <laughs> it's little stuff like that that gives it that that pulpy yeah feel that's yeah like, the kind yeah. of like like camp a little bit but it's not over the top yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's just enough because yeah you have like the guy that gets on the windshield and like stares him oh and then like <laughs> yeah <laughs> he jumps off. deuces off yeah <laughs> all right, what about you guys i mean they put like seven thousand snakes in a pit and then made the actors and stunt people go down there with the snakes, all right? Like, it's already a spectacle. Yeah. Just kind of by <laughs> default. Just by itself. Just yeah. by default, right? I, I think for me, what gets gets me is a lot of the set design. Mm-hmm. I mean, they built a, you know, presumably South American temple for the start, yeah. right? Then we go to Egypt, and they didn't just go out to the piers like, dig a hole here, boys. You know, like, they, <laughs> this is not, they, they made this themselves, right? Yeah, All this area yeah. for this dig site. Yeah, uh, apparently shooting in Tunisia for that was an absolute nightmare. I bet. Just because it was so hot. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, and, and the way that George Lucas and Spielberg got through it, where basically they were just like, I, I can't remember who they said, but like, there was like, there was someone that did this for like 41 days or something ridiculous straight with like barely food and any water. We can do this with, all of our stuff that we have. Oh, that, like, right. someone like yeah. made it yeah. across the desert yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What, but like, you know, going in, assembling the map room and, you know, making the arc, like the, the costuming is great. The, the actual sets are great. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I still love the fight around the plane. Oh yeah. Uh, especially with the, the big German dude. who's like my time to punch something. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that plane does not exist in real life. Nope. It's a fictional design. Uh, however, it is very close to an identical one from a Nazi flying wing design, um, but it was not that. They yeah. they technically called it a Blum and Voss BV-38, which it doesn't exist. Sure. Why not? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's still cool to complain. And oh, it's so the, cool. The danger of the propellers and everything else around there is, is a lot of fun to play with. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's 1981. The stunts aren't necessarily as great or some of the green screening blue screen stuff they do like when the when the german officer gets run over yeah yeah that's, that's pretty bad looking <laughs> yeah that that's it's clear that they're shooting it from a distance a they're different, trying to zoom yeah, in to like yeah, make it yeah. look as close yeah but <laughs> i mean they took a lot of you know they took some challenges some risk i mean they dug out a trench so they could drag their star behind a truck right like, yeah so yeah i think and i think mostly it paid off and it you know kind of maybe opened people's eyes and you know, kind of established what you could do in this type of film mm-hmm. going forward. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, I want to shout out the cinematography. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of just iconic shots. By Douglas Slocum. Yeah. And even some of the ones that aren't, like, what you would think of as, like, the most, like, cinematic. Or, like, you know, like, the the things that look great Cinema. still. Yeah. Yeah. Like the reveal of Indiana Jones at the front. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't show his face for the longest. And when they do. Yeah, you can see the whip first. Yeah. You know, you know, like that, that whole sequence is fantastic. That, that front sequence where he's, you know, weighing the sand, uh-huh. uh, you know, trying to swap the idols out. Classic. You know, like just that subtle sequence, the way it shot, the way they framed it was great. Mm-hmm. And then I got to give a shout out to the face melting after they open the arc. <laughs> First time I saw it as a kid, freaked me out. Oh, yeah. Nightmare Fuel as a kid, Loved right? It, oh, yeah. PG movie. Here's some yeah. Nightmare Fuel. And I, I remember the first time I found out how they did it. Because, you know, as a kid, you don't understand how special effects work or, yeah. or any of that stuff. It was in the early 90s. There was a show on Discovery called, uh, what was it called? It was something like 
it's not how it's made, but it was something, it was like a behind yeah, yeah, the yeah. scenes how they did, and they showed how they made like the wax figures mm -hmm. and they melted them and they basically like, you know, sped, sped up it footage, up or whatever. Yeah. And I was just like blown away. I was on the edge of my seat of like, that's how they did it. So after that came out, the the special effects lead that that basically made him, mm -hmm. um, he had so like basically his phone was ringing off the hook for like months oh, sure. of, of other people in the industry mm -hmm. and trying to learn how he did it yeah. so they could do it in their films, you know, those kind of things. And uh, some also note for that final scene is the spirit effects at the climax were archived or were achieved, excuse me, by shooting mannequins underwater in slow motion through a fuzzy lens to achieve the thorough quality. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. And you got to wild. do what you can do. Yeah. You know, again, no CGI <laughs> to work with here, so. Um, also, just this is just because we're kind of on um, uh, production stuff. Producers limited the on-screen blood from gunshots during the truck chase by using fine red dust instead of a liquid fake blood. Makes sense, sure. Unfortunately, the only red dust available for the stunt stunt crew was mm -hmm. cayenne pepper. Oh my gosh! Which what caused a lot of suffering. So they're really screaming in pain when they're getting <laughs> shot because there's cayenne pepper oh my going gosh. everywhere. <laughs> God, <laughs> you really sold that gunshot. What? <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the, I think this this film just really hits home a, about what you could do in an action adventure film for the time. Yeah, yeah. So let's move on to performance. Let's do it. Yeah, um, I'm not going to start this time. I'll go first. Go for it. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll skip over Harrison Ford and let somebody else talk about him. Hey, he's Harrison uh, Ford. He kind of right. He, he, does he plays what he does. the same character. Uh, I want to shout out Ronald Lacey. Oh, as Todd. As Tote Todd? Todd. It's Todd. Todd. Yeah. The opening, the first scene you see him in when he comes into Marion's bar, uh -huh. <laughs> that, that like evil, like oh, maniacal. It, like, immediately like, established, hey, this dude's got, got something wrong. This dude's creepy. Well, yeah. so he was modeled after. Fraulein. <laughs> He's got that just <laughs> creepy vibe. Uh, he was modeled after the, um, the actual Nazi SS leader, um, uh, Steven. Don't don't look at me. I don't. Oh my gosh! Like Goebbels? Or? No, it's not Goebbels. It's, no. Um. um oh hey, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll get. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll yeah. get it. I'll figure it out. Okay. Um. But yeah, he was modeled after that. But the reason why Steven Spielberg chose Ronald Lacey was because he reminded him of Peter Lo Peter Lore. Peter Lorre. Yeah. Oh wow. Or Lorre. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh. He. Um. He's. He's again. He's one of those people that when you watch this movie as a kid, you immediately know that dude's bad. Yep. This is not going to be good. Um, <laughs> and yeah, his his demeanor throughout the whole movie, he has kind of a one-note villain, but this is a pulp story, you know. So he only had 14 lines of dialogue. I know. it's He's so memorable, though. Yeah, he really is. And uh, even though, again, yeah, like you say, he doesn't have a lot to say. He's not even in that many scenes. Yeah, but, but when man, he shows up. When he shows up, you're like paying attention to that guy. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we, we mentioned a little earlier, but like, uh, you know, John Reese davies fantastic. That's all, yeah. And, you know, just the 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 heart and the 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 um, I don't know, just the joy he takes in a lot of stuff brings like the movie up. Like, yeah, it's not that it's like a downer of a movie, but it's like he he definitely he, he, he keeps the energy in scenes that are mostly dialogue. I right. think. Right. Yeah. It, it, things that are that are just and uh, the the scene with the the dates and the the oh, little, yeah. little spider monkey grabs bad the dates, dates and he grabs it. You know, oh, in the air. Yeah. yeah. Bad dates. Like what a what a cool line. Yeah. yeah. Stephen, what do you think? Uh, I, I wasn't able to find. You were, oh who, my gosh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you dig. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you left Harrison Ford out there. Yeah. I mean, this is you know an iconic role for him, which means he probably hates it. I don't know. <laughs> probably means he hates it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's Harrison Not Ford. Not enough right? to make a fifth movie, I guess. Uh, well, that's because they gave him money. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is the key to his heart and getting him on screen. Uh, you know, I Himmler. Himmler. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm. A, I really like Karen Allen as Marion. Mm -hmm. I don't know that she was necessarily given, always given the best stuff to work with. Uh, I think for the time she may have been given more than most. Well, she she obviously made some of it herself, right? She did. Yeah. Um, so the reason why she was picked was because of Steven Spielberg watching her in Animal House, National mm -hmm. Lampoon. Ah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, she's got, she's, she's an, she has an interesting look to her where you can tell that she's very pretty. Yeah. But at the same time, you could totally see her being the tomboy. Oh yeah, right. right? Yeah, yeah. So like it, it she hit, can hit both notes, right? Like when uh, the other archaeologist gives her like the dress and it's oh, being kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. 
then you're like, oh yeah, you know, she pulls this off really well. But then also like the rough and tumble, mm -hmm. you know, whatnot, you know, breaking out the frying pan is also <laughs> totally believable. Or, or, you know, running the bar or whatnot. Yeah. Well, and she, and she has the, um, she definitely brings a lot of emotion to a lot, some of the more quieter scenes, especially when they're on the boat after they escape Egypt. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's and, a really good uh, scene. It's a great scene. Where does it not hurt? <laughs> well, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a, a really leader, good, leader like, down. you know, kind of like romance, like decompressed moment. And then, you know, he obviously passes out or, right. and she hits him with the, with the mirror and stuff. That's a good yeah, scene. It's, it's great. Uh, but then also, and I just clicked away because I wasn't paying attention. There you go. Paul Freeman as Belloc. Ah, uh, Belloc's great. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, you know, again, we have Tote as our, Tote? Todd? Todd. Todd yeah. as kind of our creepy villain. Yeah. And then we have Belloc as our more uh, scheming villain, if you uh -huh. will. Like he's scheming always, rival kind of. Yeah, he's always yeah. besting Indiana. He has the like, line right at the start where, you know, remember anything you can find, I can take. Well, and then when he gets the arc, he's like, once again, Mr. Jones, <laughs> once again, I've Mr. taken Mr. something. Jones. And I'm like, I hate this guy. Uh, yeah, I hate this guy. <laughs> well, and, and the thing is, too, is he's actually not really a smart villain. He right. is, he is just, he has no problem selling himself out yeah. To justify the means. He's opportunistic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I was, that was really all I had. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he already covered, you know, John Reese davies mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much on the same same thing. I mean, Harrison Ford just kind of plays himself. But I think this is probably the closest role that he fits into as a, as a person. Well, I was going to say, the character of Indiana Jones could only be played by Harrison Ford. Like, yeah. I'll give him that. Like, it, it is a very good and iconic character. I don't think I don't think Tom Selleck would have done really well in this. It would no, have been a totally different movie. Very yeah. different yeah. character. Which I can totally see why they would have thought Tom Selleck at the time. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, especially, especially if you watch, like, Quigley Down Under or mm -hmm. some of his other stuff that's not Magnum P.I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he, he, he definitely would have gone in a totally different direction than yeah. what Harrison Ford did. Uh, but yeah, Karen Allen is, is great as Marion. Mm -hmm. Um... But, uh, yeah, so let's, let's move on to score. Let's do it. Uh, John Williams. We've already talked about this. We had an entire opening section about John Williams. All right, sure. so the score's done. So moving on. To let's the rehash it all. <laughs> it, it is fantastic. I mean, it's one of the most iconic and memorable scores that John Williams, one, has ever made. And, two, it really adds a lot to the film, I think, especially yeah. um, during the action scenes. You don't even have to have the major fanfare, and you still have a lot of the leitmotifs that show up. Mm -hmm. throughout these scenes to like you get Marion's theme and you get the um kind of like the harder like Nazi style theme you know and it just does such a great job at keeping the energy throughout the film I mean I, well, I can't I really say anything else about it the beauty <laughs> of John Williams scores especially the ones where he has that iconic theme like Raiders yeah. like like Superman like that kind of stuff is it like they're so easily rememberable because he doesn't do like a thousand notes. It's like a, a very... Bum, ba, da, bum, bum, yeah, he, like, finds, that's all you need. the hand, so then handful he needs. When later in a, in a scene, you see Harrison Ford like glance over at his hat and you hear just a one horn in the distance. Bum, ba, da, da, yeah. And it makes you go, yeah. yeah. Like, you know? So like, I, I don't know if it's just because, you know, when I was a kid, it's easier to remember John Williams scores because they're like just, again simplistic on on one level with like just a few notes yeah right mm -hmm. but when they do show up later in motifs and in certain songs and just like little little stingers that hit yeah. every now and then it's so fun because you just you get energized when you hear that you yeah. know and it's the same with star wars superman any of his his most iconic stuff yeah steven anything to add uh i mean you know the main again this is this is the moment when the indiana jones theme is made right yeah. Yeah. And it's it's really kind of hard to not overstate that in the sense of this this hits, right? Yeah. And it will always hit mm -hmm. because you just, again, you know, you see the whip or the hat and you get just a little bump, bump, bump. It's like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. This is where we're going, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it's really hard to, to ignore that, I guess, in terms of the score and mm -hmm. that it is just so big and there and important and has you know again survived for so long and it's such an iconic thing uh, i think maybe some of the other music didn't go as far as i thought you know like in a more modern setting right mm -hmm. if we have that kind of egyptian setting we would get maybe a little more of those tones in there yeah 
Uh, yeah, which, that's, which that's fair. It's a little sad to not see it because I mean we've seen it with like a uh, Roger Moore. So and, well, and mm-hmm. you actually get a lot more of that in the later films for Indiana Jones. Like Temple of Doom has a very specific yes, style soundtrack mm-hmm. compared to the locale. Right. Instead of just a gen, I'll say a general action adventure soundtrack that yeah, right, Raiders right. has. But speaking of that, I, I feel like this score really fits the pulpy forties. Oh, style very, very yeah. much so, to a yes. T. You know, yeah. and to do that in the eighties was like. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't make it sound like a soundtrack from the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, or, or like, like the Cindy late 70s. And- <laughs> yeah, they were like, this is going to sound like a, you know, a movie, a, a, a soundtrack that could have happened in the 40s. Yeah, well, well and, and it, it also and, makes it timeless. Yeah, right? I was going to yeah. say, it, it yeah. helps make it timeless up to the point to where it's just like, I can just throw this on and not like, I know it. And yeah. I like, I know what scene it's from, you know, like, and that obviously helps because I've seen it a lot. But yeah, like you still like whenever you hear the Indiana Jones theme, it's on. Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's move on to plot. Okay. Um, I, I I think the plot on this film is um, paper thin at best. Uh, Does it need to be anything it, else? It doesn't. It doesn't. I, I that, think it's a good plot. It's I mean, fine. I, I like the trick they play where they talk about, uh, you know, well, how'd they get a copy of the, the medallion? Yeah, because they use only, one, only yeah. one version of it, you know, and, and it's because he burned himself with yeah. it. Yeah. And then, of course, <laughs> well, it's inscribed on both sides. They don't have both sides. Yeah. I thought that was a good plot. From watching as a kid, I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I really only remember certain pieces, right? So seeing that, is like, oh, yeah, that's a good play. You know, they're they're working with this, but yeah, it, it definitely suffers a lot. I think in the dig site, when especially with uh, Sala, it, it does where he's just kind of like the Nazis have him, and now they just don't don't or what the, the low. <laughs> well, and so my my read on that has always been that they don't understand. Well, he's the just, importance of him. They think he's just some dude. That yeah, just just kind of mind, w- around. Yeah. What, and he's always you know, he's good at the excuse making, and he's you know, carry on. You know, oh yeah, yeah just water, water. Yes, 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 water, water. You <laughs> right, know that yeah. that bit. But at the same time, like when Indy is in the 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 map, map room, room or whatever, yeah. it, they bust him dead to rights, and then he's just like standing there, and it's like you got to give me a little something here. <laughs> you got to yeah. transition this a little smoother. Yeah, the um the other thing about the map room for me was like where the location of the arc is they didn't, on the map, like in the map room, mm-hmm. it's literally just dead center, the most obvious <laughs> it spot is. it could possibly be. Yeah, for sure. And again, this is nitpicky and stuff. Yeah, it is like, very nitpicky. But my thing is like, you know, the sun is in different positions depending on the time of the year. <laughs> and I was like, how did they know <laughs> that on this, this day, this is the ideal this time. exact season? Yeah. You know, because like if they'd done this three months later, it been, it'd been winter or whatever. It'd been a different building altogether. <laughs> moving tons of tons of sand for no reason. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, what? Whatever. But yeah, I, I think the, the plot itself, and again, not to uh, defend the simplicity, but I think it's because it's based off of those pulp 40s oh, absolutely. adventures, you know, like, the, like that's, the, that's, people that's, just got out of jams. Oh, 100%. And like, yeah, it's just, happen, you know. Well, if, again, uh, Andrew cited, you know, that 1010 was a lot of inspiration for mm-hmm. Indiana Jones. If you go back and read 1010 right now, yeah, that dude's incredibly lucky right yeah he, he gets out of a lot of things just because things break his way not not for any other not reason. For yeah any other yeah reason. not yeah. yeah not because he planned ahead or anything like that and that i mean that is very much the spirit of indiana jones absolutely where yeah. you know like it's not that he outsmarts the germans he does a little bit here and mm-hmm. there but a lot of it's just because of blind luck well right he, it's also i mean it's again it's the roguish charm right but he kind of outgrits them. Yeah. And then gets lucky because he just outlasts, right? Yeah. But what I do love about the plot is the overall just outline of like, okay, what we have to do is we have to find the Ark of the Covenant because number one, it's real. Number two, <laughs> the Nazis are after it and we're in the middle of World War II and they're well, going we're not, to... we're not there yet. No, 1936. 1936. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so we're, they're, we're they're leading up the, to World War II. Of, almost yeah. at the height of their power. Yeah. Right, right, right. So like... We have to get this before them. Yeah. Yes. Like, so we're going to go on a globe trotting, you know, adventure to try to find this using, you know, raiding some some tombs and archaeology and dig yeah. sites and all, all that adventure stuff. It's a really good jumping off point to me for a really solid adventure. And then it sets up so many of the action scenes 
so well that it's just like I, I can forgive any kind of like simplistic plot stuff for people like oh, getting I out can, of trouble. I can too. Yeah. Like, like yeah. me, me knocking on it does not mean right. that I do not enjoy this film. But I, I just want to make sure that we illustrate that like I do think in terms of the overall bones of the plot and like the the, yeah. the call to adventure that happens and what they're they're after is a lot of fun. Yeah, it, I, mean, so. I mean, my my main objection is not oh the plot doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's more just like hey, we could have spent a little more time with mm. this story for you to fill in a few details. Yeah. And I, that would have been appreciated. You know, it would have made yeah. it feel or flow a little less jerky. Yeah. Um, I, now they do, you know, talking about this being the prototype, right? They do pull a Rise of Skywalker Chewbacca on us with the truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, which just doesn't really make any sense at all. I had totally forgotten that that happened. <laughs> and yeah. it's just like, oh yeah, they did do this. Like, what like what was I supposed to believe here? Like where was but the bait and switch? It was different from the Chewbacca thing, where they didn't reveal it in the next scene. They waited like yeah, a little they, further. They, 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 they let it bit. hang yeah. a little, yeah. Yeah, but, they let it hang at least. So you think, oh gosh, she's she died. <laughs> what a terrible explosion. Yeah. Well, I mean, even in the Chewbacca thing, if you were paying attention, you could see there are two transports. Sure. Whereas in this, you only get to see the one truck. But right. they do the whole like basket shuffle which I thought was kind of hilarious too because it's like he's jumping around knocking this baskets off people's shoulders. It's like, dude, the basket was yelling your name. Are any of these baskets yelling your name? <laughs> no. That's a dude's laundry. What are Stop you doing? Stop messing with these people. Yeah. Um, the um, uh, Just speaking of the basket scene just reminded me of uh -huh. the monkey. Uh, but, that, but we have a great scene right before that, right? Yeah. yeah. Where the monkey's jumping on top. In here. In here. I know. They, they also had to, had to train or figure out a way to train the monkey to do the Nazi salute. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. And, and we, it was, we were watching that and Lauren goes, did they teach the monkey how to sing Heil? I was like, apparently. Uh, yeah, so they had a um, they had a, a stick with a grape on it right outside of frame, and they were just holding it. Like he was trying to reach out to grab it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Talk about out of context. They're going to cancel that poor monkey. <laughs> you didn't see the whole context. You didn't see the grape. <laughs> um, so a lot of um, – one of the things that I always found really fascinating, and this kind of pops up in other not – Indiana Jones related stuff, but it's Nazi related is they were very, um, I'm not going to say obsessed, but very interested in like the occult and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, yeah. which is, which is true. It is. Yeah. yeah. So then like, if you go to other games like uh, return to castle Wolfenstein, mm -hmm. uh, which is first person shooter came out in the nineties or maybe early two thousands. But, um, like the whole thing is based initially. You're like, Oh, you're just a, a secret agent. You're going to go fight the Nazis. And then it turns into this whole thing of like, Oh, they're like trying to summon zombies and like you're all like other kind of stuff. Infiltrating yeah. hell. Yeah. 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 And, and those kind of motifs really hit, um, you know, a lot of different beats with, with just kind of what they were trying to do back then, mm -hmm. just even in real life. And I, I always yeah. find that really fascinating because they hit that, they hit that obviously in, um, uh, crusade. crusade and yeah. then technically and um, but those are the russians at that point and eh, it's weird but Ten, yes yeah. <laughs> the, the point is the nazis in real life yeah were, we're, we're obsessed with the occult the, yeah, to and try so, and get whatever edge they possibly could before they you know did terrible well, things I mean, they yeah. knew they knew that they would lose the war if i'm being if we're being honest like there was no actual like logistical way they win so yeah. yeah, they're trying that's, to find. That's, that's they what needed the ark of the. Covenant. They need the ark of the covenant. <laughs> yep. you know, no, no army stands <laughs> against it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so let, let's move on to some entertainment. Yeah, which is basically like this whole film. Yeah, this, like, this film is entertainment. This it, it really film is, yeah. is entertainment in the dictionary. <laughs> entertainment. It says Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just. I mean, I just love this film. It's just a lot yeah. of fun. And uh, good quips. You have good um, chemistry between um, Indy and Marion. Yeah. Yes. Much better than, you know, say the chemistry between uh, Deckard and uh, his love interest in Blade Runner. Like oh, two gosh. planks going well, at two it, Two planks just going at it. Like, <laughs> like I, I believed that Indy and Marion had history. Oh, yes. And yeah. that it had – like, like that was a way more believable scenario all around. Well, I think just because – um, Karen Allen is just such a strong actress. I, she is great, honestly, just the whole time. Yeah. Even again, even though half her lines were just Indy. <laughs> yeah. But she, she's like just that, that spitfire. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and she's a good foil for Indiana Jones, I think. Right. Because, you know, obviously like he, he cares about her and in, in some level and he yeah. probably never stopped caring about her. He's just like, you know, they just went different ways. He had to live his life being well, an archaeologist well, caused, slash action hero. It caused <laughs> slash professor. It caused the falling out between 
him and his mentor, yeah. which was her dad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was you know a significant life event. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What about what about you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an easy movie to put on. Like we've said a hundred times, it's it's so entertaining. I think, like like you said, the chemistry is great, the action's great, the music's great. It's just entertainment. Yeah, principle. I, I don't know. I don't want to say anything else because I feel like I'm repeating myself. Yeah, yeah, to I mean, yeah. What, like I said, we've been gushing about. The I was going to say, I'm for... trying. To, what else can I gush about? <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of the definition of the summer blockbuster popcorn. You know, it, it well, mined the good oh, stuff out of the Pulp Fiction era. And in a in a uh, you know biography of Spielberg's work, it's mm-hmm. a very important inflection point where it shows a lot of his filmmaking techniques up until the time. And how he's kicking it up a notch, mm, yeah. you know, and then you can see the DNA from it and everything else after it, you know. Oh, one thing I will say, which we haven't even really mentioned yet, is the bar fight. Um, mm-hmm. That, like, as a kid, this was like the most violent thing I had ever seen. Well, well, not even just that too, but also Todd, you know, like his, like again, talking about how chilling and evil oh, he is, yeah. and he's you know talking to her, just you know, calm, casual voice, and he pulls the hot poker out. <laughs> yep. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we not? Gosh. I hope for your sake he hasn't acquired it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. And but that whole sequence of of them, you know, brawling in the in the bar and you know, catching people on Set, fire, yeah, shooting people, people in the head. So like, many good use of shadows. Oh, and that yeah. whole thing, like from where Indy comes in and he she sees his shadow yeah, his on silhouette. the wall, his yeah. silhouette, and then later when you see the silhouettes, and then at the one point when he's like Shoot, shoot them, them both. Shoot them both. <laughs> and then the guy helps Indy like shoot the guy. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that whole sequence is great. Yeah, it's it's pretty fantastic. Oh, and also too, when uh, Todd you know, reappears in the desert. Yeah, and he open he takes his jacket off and hands it to the guy, and he opens his bag. Oh, and he, got pulls, the, the, he pulls out the <gasps> the torture device. Oh, and yeah. It's just a it's just a hanger for his coat. <laughs> it's the it, most it's, elaborate coat hanger I've ever seen. It's, it's, it's a, such it's a, a good portable scene, coat though, hanger yeah. because or a good moment because you get you're like oh no this is going to turn real bad yeah. and you're like okay okay yeah, uh, yeah okay. it's just a coat hanger. It's, it was just like <laughs> how much terror he instills of he pulled out this weird object out what it is yeah this is a torture device he's gonna do something freaky to me and it's a coat hanger. He's just putting his coat up. Don't want to get it dusty. Yeah. Because I don't want to get it dusty when he's doing something freaky. Uh, don't don't want to get don't want to get your blood on me, yeah. Fraulein. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So we're we're kind of winding down here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um be you know, before we get into the um the the shameless shills of the episode, mm-hmm. uh, we are going to be doing basically all the Indiana Jones films, mm-hmm. moving all the way up to Indiana Jones and the all, Dial of Destiny. All three of them. All four of them. All three of them. Because we're going to have to watch the fifth one. Uh, four becomes <laughs> four comes to four five. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, we have a whole series going to be happening here um, throughout you yeah. know, the next couple months or whatever. I haven't seen Crystal Skull since I saw it in theater. I, I haven't either. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie. Ever? I don't want to then see Then you don't the get movie. to complain. You, yeah, you have no, you have no complaints. Holes in the race. I, get I out have of here. every right to complain. No, I don't. can't wait for us to review it. And Steve is like, I secretly loved it. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no way that that is going to happen. No, I, I don't think I, there is. I, no. I, don't, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> no. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so look forward to, uh, to some of those episodes coming out mm. because it's going to be kind of wild. Yeah. Well, it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be a fun ride. We're, we're, we're going to hit Indiana a point Jones. where you all get to pick pick and make fun of me where I'm just like, it was so bad. Don't make me watch it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, that's pretty much all the time we have. But before we go, we have to shill the Patreon because that's what we do at the end of every episode. It's how we keep the, the hosting light, the hosting lights. The hosting, the hosting lights. lights on. <laughs> Gotta keep we, the light on. we have one green blinking light in the corner. We have yeah. to keep that on. It's like there's lost. A, there's a server room with all of our episodes <laughs> on it and just that light slow, blinking slower Every and slower. 90 minutes we have yeah. to put in a new code. We have to throw money into a furnace and <laughs> like turn the light back on. The uh, is shoveling no, money yeah, in. So if you like what you've heard, you're like, hey, these guys, they got it figured out. I like hearing them talk about movies and other things. Check out our Patreon for one dollar, right? You can get access to all of our bonus episodes, and these aren't the same format as our normal episodes. These are like we go off the cuff. Uh, we, we have tier like, lists. We have anime recommendations. Yeah. Um, President Fight Club. Yeah, 
a where personal we, favorite of mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we figured out if we could beat each president of the United States just based off their presidential portrait. Just yep. first impression, look at it. Could we take this Do guy? Do we think we could take Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. No. A- absolutely not. Answer, no. Absolutely, absolutely not. not. <laughs> a lot of fun stuff, though. And soda, again, soda tier list is out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, Star Wars tier list that you want to get into a contentious one. Yeah. Yep. Or, uh, I don't know, Bond openings again. Bond I just, openings. Where I just let Ryan Andrew and I and Ryan come to uh, yeah. blows. You know, that's yeah. how it goes. But yeah, I mean, it, it really does help support the cast and we do appreciate mm-hmm. it. It's guaranteed one episode per month mm-hmm. and that accesses everything that has already come before it. So, yeah. you know, every time, you know, we come out with a new one, hey, guess what? You get there it. There it is. Yeah. There lot, it is. A lot of right good there. content out there. Uh, obviously, if you can't afford the dollar, we understand, you know, these uh, inflationary times are upon us. Uh, but we would love if you, you know, leave us a like, leave us a review on your favorite podcast program mm-hmm. of choice. Share us with a friend. Yeah, share yeah. us with a friend. Share us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram. Leave a comment. You know, let, let us hear from you. Yeah. Yep. And that sounds like all the time we have. So until next time, next time, next week. Is it next time? Just say next time. Next yeah. time, yeah. Bad channel? So, so until next time, I'm Andrew. I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. And every spoiler was intended. <laughs> we are dangly bits recording. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm good to go whenever. What's our intro topic? Uh, John Williams. John Williams. That's right. That's top, top three. Oh, God. Wait, Scores. top three? Yeah. Soundtracks oh, that just... should not be that hold on. hard. Soundtrack? Come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Scores. Yeah. Individual... Top three st- soundtracks. Okay, so an entire movie. Complete package. All right. It does change things. Do I have to put them in order? It does. No, it absolutely yeah. changes things. Do I have to put them in order? No, you can be any order. <laughs>